My name is Rudy Checkley. I'm a special agent um, with the Second Judicial District District Attorney's Office. I'm assigned to the Sexual Assault Kit Initiative. I conduct sexual assault uh, kit backlog investigations. I have about 18 years of law enforcement experience, and I've been in my current assignment for almost three years. Forensic genealogy is uh, law enforcement's use of DNA analysis combined with traditional genealogy research to generate investigative leads, leads for unsolved violent crimes. Um, keep in mind, these investigations aren't simple by any means. There's still a lot of work to be done. For example, we're, we're given a case and the, the investigative leads have been exhausted. There's no further leads to follow up on. We have vague offender information or it's an unknown offender, maybe vague vehicle information, nothing really identifying, no fingerprints, et cetera. And the, um, we've uploaded the DNA samples from the uh, same kit into the uh, uh, CODIS, the combined uh, DNA index system in, um, and the New Mexico DNA identification system and there's no hit or match. At that point, we've exhausted all investigative leads. At that point, what we do is we'll communicate with a laboratory to see if our samples are sufficient for a genealogy investigation. And if they are, what they do is we send them the lab reports and the DNA samples if needed. So that way they can conduct further testing if required, and if not, upload the uh, data that we provide them. What happens with, with that data is it's compared to various uh, genealogy databases. And these samples come from uh, just normal uh, commercial uh, genealogy sites, such as family tree, ancestry, things like that. What happens is they find similarities are they, of DNA within, the, within a family. And then what will happen at that point is usually they'll provide us with information as far as which family to try and narrow the family tree. And so what we'll do is we'll go out, we'll um, normally we'll try and do a, what they call a serpentitious collection, which would mean collecting a discarded cigarette butt, a uh, piece of silverware, water bottle, they used a paper cup, whatever. And we submit those to the lab. And based on that, they can narrow the family tree further. Once we get to that point, we start identifying possible suspects. And what we do is we start doing backgrounds on them to see if there's criminal history, if they were within the area where the crime occurred during that time period to kind of try and narrow further down the uh, the suspect pool because it could be, you know, depending upon the family, it could be 10, 15 family members or as small as one or two. So once we've done that, then we start looking at, at the possibilities. And at that point, we begin to um, try and conduct surveillance to basically establish patterns and stuff like that for collection. And what we do then is we follow them around and stuff and we look for opportunities to conduct a serpentitious collection. Maybe they go out to eat, maybe they go to a bar and have drinks, et cetera. And we grab a, when they left the premises, when they've truly abandoned the property, we um, collect that sample and submit it to the lab. And then at that point, if there's a confirmation That'll give us enough probable cause to get a search warrant for an actual DNA sample, formal sample. If it's not a match, then we know we were chasing the wrong person and we look at our the other possibilities and begin the process over again.
Right now, we currently have about 15 cases that are in various stages of investigation from initial to um, some in the, going into the prosecution phase at this point. And we have had one successful conviction at this point on a genealogy investigation. Wow, that, that's a, a good question. I was thinking about it. I started in 1982 in law enforcement. And just to show you how much it's evolved, back then you needed eyewitnesses, you needed fingerprints. Uh, if you could recover the weapon that was used to compare uh, marks and stuff like that. With genealogy, we have the ability to take an unknown sample and start developing an investigative lead. It's still uh, a very new science, or I won't say a very new science, but for law enforcement, it's still fairly new. Our office was the first office to successfully have a genealogy investigation which resulted in a guilty plea. It, it's just an incredible investigative tool because there was a point where you'd hidden it a dead end. Let, for example, you upload the samples and there's nothing in CODIS or the New Mexico DNA database. That would be it. But with, the, with genealogy, we're able to still continue and attempt to do an investigation by identifying family tree and starting to narrow it down that way. So it's just an incredible investigative tool to be able to use. There's many cases that would have been never, would never have been solved if it wasn't used for use of genealogy.